I shall awam when I began his lesson by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Basim Yahweh Shah, Waha Rakakwadas, which in the ancient Hebrew tongue would be the correct names of the Heavenly Father, his beloved Son, and the Holy Spirit. I also would like to give double honors to my teachers, the head apostles and elders of the great millstone. Much due honors and respect to the sense brethren out there that's also laboring in his work. And as always, want to say shalom to the believers, you know, the Akim, as well as the Akwath, which will be you brothers, along with the sisters that subscribe to this truth as well. So, yeah, just wanted to go into another quick lesson, you know, pretty much continuing in the spirit and theme of prophecy. And for those amongst you out there who have somewhat of a feel for the climate, you know, throughout the world, pretty much those amongst you believers who somewhat know the pulse on the planet Earth right now, which has presented itself, you know, in the form of this pestilence, which have been framed as the crown 19. All right, you hear this word mandatory being thrown around more and more, you know, in relation to you people out there being vaccinated, all right, which have created this overwhelming presence of unrestlessness and unease. And overall, the spirit of fear is now beginning to seep into the minds and hearts of you people out there and what contributes to that fear is your understanding or lack thereof concerning the things that's now beginning to come upon the planet earth whereas those amongst us believers we understand all too well that this is nothing more than a product of prophecy <laughs> all right pretty much everything is going according to schedule in relation to the things written and foretold to come to pass here in the latter days which brings me to this lesson which i want to entitle as projected, the prophecies are amongst us. Now, before we get into this lesson, what I wanted to do was look up this word projected. Projected. Yeah, it says estimated or forecast on the basis of current trends or data. All right. So the word projected pretty much means something that is estimated or forecast on the basis of current trends. Right which would be, you know, things that's trending, current events. It says, or data, which that word data translates to information. And in this case, the information that's outlined in the Holy Scriptures, all right? So as projected, you know, concerning the current events, things trending, and information or data, all right, which is outlined again in the Holy Scriptures, the prophecies are right here, man. The prophecies are amongst us, which brings me to the book of, Matthew, the 24th chapter, and starting at the 32nd verse. And these are the words of our Lord, Yahweh Shah. It says, Now learn a parable of the fig tree, when his branch is yet tender, and put it forth leaves, ye know that summer is not. And there's a method, if you will, to why our Lord, Yahweh Shah, used the fig tree as to make a point. Why? Because the fig tree would be considered a tangible thing, something that you could physically evaluate. All right? And this fig tree, as all trees are, are somewhat of a gauge, <laughs> you know, concerning where you at in relation to the changing of seasons. You know, when you consider a tree, when it begins to shed, right, which would be in the fall, what well, that signifies that you're about to go into the winter, all right? And that same tree, when it begins to bud forth, well, it signals to you that we are headed into the summer. So uh, trees, and in this case, this fig tree, would be a gauge to where we at in relation to the changing of seasons. So this fig tree is pretty much symbolic to prophecy, man. <laughs> All right? Just as you evaluate a tree, you know, and, and in that assessment of that tree, you know where you at concerning the changing of seasons. Well, that's the same with prophecy. We physically see the prophecies amongst us, and it's somewhat of a gauge to where we at in this process. Again, now learn a parable of the fig tree when his branches yet tender and put it forth leaves, ye know, see, ye know that summer is not. So the Lord is physically showing us the prophecies unfold. <laughs> see, verse 33. So likewise, see, so likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, see, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. What things? When ye shall see what things, man? The prophecies. See that? The prophecies. Matter of fact, 
Let me grab some real quick before we continue. It's the book of Second Ezra, the ninth chapter. In the first verse, it says, He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest, see, and when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Right? So the scriptures say, when thou seest <laughs> part of the signs past, then pretty much you're going to know where you at in this journey. It's almost like if you're taking a road trip, you have certain signs that physically pass you, man, to let you know where you at as somewhat of a gauge to where you at, you know, in that journey, man. See that? You might see a sign that passed that say you 80 miles out of whatever respected city you're entering, you know? And as you proceed, you might see another sign say, now you're 20 miles uh, from that city. Well, those signs that you pass by, those signs that pass pretty much indicates where you at in that journey. It's a gauge, if you will. See? So it's no different with the things that you see unfolding right before your eyes. The prophecies, the things that's foretold to come to pass here in the latter days are amongst you, man. <laughs> see? But those who have eyes to see are, are the only ones who are going to appreciate, you know, these signs and they're going to understand, you know, the meaning and the magnitude, if you will, of these things happening. Matter of fact, let me grab something else real quick before we go back. This is the book of Matthew, 13th chapter in the 16th verse. It says, but blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. And this is concerning the Lord's elect. All right. You have certain spirits that's numbered amongst the children of Israel, whom the Lord counted worthy to dwell in these courts, meaning you are able to partake in this wise counsel. When this doctrine was presented to you in its purest form, it registered with you. You was able to retain it, all right? Which we know the overtone of this ministry is what? Prophecy, man. All right, the testimony of our Lord, Yahweh Shah, is the spirit of prophecy pursuant to the book of Revelation in 19th chapter. Now, with that said, those prophecies that you believe in, the Lord is going to physically make them manifest, man. <laughs> all right? They're going to be made manifest. That's why our Lord Yahweh Shah, again, referred to the fig tree as something to consider. Why? Because it's something tangible, something that you could physically assess. So pretty much the Lord cemented these prophecies that we believe in by way of bringing them to pass physically. We could physically see them unfolding right before our eyes when you consider in the time of Noah, <laughs> you know. When Noah was, was preaching, and he was preaching the idea of that bridge uh, to your salvation in that day being the ark. Well, that was a point where the people physically saw the ark, man. All right? And we often touch on that. You know, when Noah was 65%, 70% done with the ark, you would think that the people would begin to consider. Here it is, this humongous, this massive boat, all right? It, it's before them. And yet, they didn't consider, man. So that was a time where the Lord physically showed the people, you know, uh, their... Uh, bridge to salvation in the form of that ark. And that's the same today, you know? Yeah, we told you for an example that the RFID chip is the mark of the beast. But what happened eventually, the Lord physically showed you, man. He's physically showing you that. You physically have a chip in your debit card. <laughs> All right, you hit a lingo, you know, you go to certain stores, do you have a chip? But that's the Lord physically making manifest the prophecies, man. So now the prophecies are amongst us as projected. See that? So when you go back here again to the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter, and again, the 33rd verse, it says, So likewise ye, when ye shall see, see that? When ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors, verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. What things, again, the prophecies, man. All right? So they are now amongst us, you know? There's no more up for debate whether uh, the so-called white man in the form of his U.S. government is beginning to wage war on the children of Israel. That's not up for debate anymore, man. Why? Because the Lord is physically showing you these things. It's physically amongst you as projected. See, and that's the thing with the prophecies, man. The prophecies will eventually come to pass. The Lord is going to bring it up close and personal, man. The Lord is not a man that he shall lie. Matter of fact, 
Let's get that real quick. It's the book of Numbers, the 23rd chapter and the 19th verse. It says, The Most High is not a man that he shall lie, neither the son of man that he shall repent. Have he said and shall he not do it? Or have he spoken yet? When did the Lord speak? By where the prophecy is, man. For an example, the Lord have spoken that America, Babylon the Great, would be violently overthrown. All right, when World War III has ran its course and reached its climax, this place, America, is going to be left totally desolate, man. Well, guess what? The Lord spoke that. And guess what? He's going to make it good. Again, it says, have he said and shall he not do it? Or have he spoken, see, or have he spoken and shall he not make it good? See that? So the prophecies are not only spoken, but eventually they're made manifest. All right. Real quick, let's click on this word for good. Because the scriptures say, or have he spoken and shall he not make it good? <laughs> All right. So when you click on this word right here, the Hebrew word that would be quam, quam, right? It says to rise, arise, stand, rise up, stand up, to arise. It says to arise, become powerful, to arise, come on the scene. See that? To come on the scene. <laughs> when something comes on the scene, that means it's manifested, all right? And in relation to this lesson, you know, the things projected are now amongst us or now beginning to come upon the scene, which is the perfect segue <laughs> to the book of Second Ezra, the 16th chapter, and starting at the 36th verse. It says, Behold, the word of the Lord receive it. Yeah, and the word of the Lord translates again to the prophecies. See, again, it says, Behold, the word of the Lord receive it. Yeah, you are to embrace the prophecies when presented unto you. It shouldn't vex you to yield to the words of the prophets, man, and to receive the words of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh which again translates to the prophecies. Behold, the word of the Lord receive it. Believe not the gods of whom the Lord spake. And that's concerning, you know, these different ideas, philosophies, different doctrines, which is presented to you by way of these texts, whether it's the so-called Holy Quran or the Enum, at least the Epic uh, of Gilgamesh, the Egyptian Book of the Dead, which all those different sources, those different texts, they pale in comparison to the Holy Bible. Why? Because this is the one book that consists of prophecy, <laughs> you know? If you was to ask a, a Muslim to produce one prophecy from the so-called Holy Quran, they'll be hard-pressed to do so. See? So this is what sets the Holy Bible above and beyond any of these different texts out there. See that? Again, behold the word of the Lord, which again is the prophecies. Receive it. Believe not the gods of whom the Lord spake. Behold, the plagues draw nigh and are not slack. As when a woman with child in the ninth month Bring it forth her son with two or three hours of her birth. Great pains compass her womb, which pains when the child cometh forth, they slack not a moment. Now, the reason why I wanted to outline this particular precept, you know, concerning a woman with child is because when you consider a woman in her pregnancy, there's a point where the baby is hidden, man. <laughs> there's a point where you can't see the baby, although it's projected that the baby will be born. You know, at some point you will see the baby, but there's a point where the baby is hidden. But eventually what happens, the baby is made manifest. When that baby breaks forth out of the womb, then you can physically see the baby. See that? So that's the same when concerning biblical prophecy, man. There was a time where you couldn't see it. It was hidden. But now we're in a time where, as projected, the prophecies are now amongst us. So, yeah, I just wanted to touch on that. Lord willing, it was edifying. To the next time I say, Shalom. Shall the trumpet be blown in the city, and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in the city, and the Lord hath not done it? Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Who hath ears to hear? Let him hear. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, 
from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they see he see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them.